Do you want to make a difference in the world? And see the lives of the people of India and all internationals transformed with the gospel? As India goes, all Asia will go with Living the Dream podcast provides tools for you to pray, give, and go as you become an active participant in the Great Commission and help your church's demographic represent the demographic of your community. Get ready to find your strategy for reaching your community and changing the world here at Living the Dream Podcast with your host, Pastor Kevin. Good morning. I'm Pastor Kevin, founder and executive director of Global Hope India and your host for Living the Dream Podcast. This is where the church gathers to mobilize in order to effectively reach the community and change the world, including all the foreign-born internationals moving into our communities. I interview today's top church leaders from around the world so we can learn all we can about reaching internationals with the gospel and partnering with them in the Great Commission. It's time the church has this conversation. Go to globalhopeindia.org forward slash resources for tools for your success. Now let's jump into today's show. Before we welcome today's special guest, I'm going to refer to as Lady B from Chennai, India. Let me share some additional context with you about why I had a mix of excitement and disappointment when Lady B agreed to be on the show. I was excited she agreed, but I was kicking myself that I hadn't thought of her first. See, I had spoken to her husband, who is Pastor B, pastoring in Chennai, India. Now, Pastor B is a brilliant man. Just wait until you hear their story. But the more he and I discuss today's show, he said, you know, you really need to be interviewing Lady B instead of me. He could have handled it masterfully. But what you need to know about Pastor B is that he is an incredible equipper of the saints. A few years ago, God led him to commit to plant 20 churches by 2020. And last month, they celebrated their 20th launch. I've been blessed to serve beside him and his team since 2013. And everywhere I go throughout the Chennai area, I meet pastors and leaders that Pastor B and Lady B have raised up in ministry. Talk about one of India's sweetest families. We've taken over 50 people to serve with their churches in Chennai. And everyone, and I mean everyone, loves Pastor B, Lady B, and their family. They are so simple, humble, and beautiful. Now, Lady B is a pastor's wife. She's a mother of two children. She also teaches school. She is active in their churches and helps lead one of the child development centers. She loves taking care of our teams, discipling younger women, and doing village outreach. It brings me great pleasure to welcome Lady B to Live in the Dream. Over the last 20 years, I've been seeing firsthand the diversity in India and just how diverse Mm -hmm. India is. I'm in conversations now with churches here in the U.S. on their need Mm -hmm. to reach the internationals living here in the U.S., for our churches to be as diverse as our communities are. And so I'd love to get some of your impression about the diversity in India. India is actually a land of diversity, different cultures, different languages. Mm -hmm. And it's a very big country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has like 29 states and seven union territories. Mm -hmm. And each state and union territory has its own own government. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's like 22 languages approved by the Constitution of India, and we have many more lands. We have more religions, we have more cultures, we have people with different uh, colors, like they are white in color, they are uh, black in color, and they are like uh, whitish in color. Mm-hmm. So each state or each place has its own uh, uh, like production coal, mine, wheat, maize, barley. In one state, it's uh-huh. rich in flowers. In one state, it's rich in apples. Mm-hmm. So India is like, altogether, it's a very diverse nation. Mm-hmm. And like three seas, Arabian Sea in the west, Bay of Bengal in the east, and Indian Ocean in the south. Mm-hmm. And when we go to the landforms, we have different type of landforms. Like we have plateau, we have uh, mountains, we have hills, uh, we have plains. 
Mm-hmm. So even the land forms are just different. Like in the North India, we have more like central highlands, mm-hmm. and when you go to the South India, we have Deccan Plateau. So mm-hmm. two types of land forms are there, mm-hmm. and then we have uh, the Himalayas add to the beauty of our country. The Himalayas add to the beauty of the country. We have the largest mountain peak Everest in our country. Yeah. So it all adds to the beauty of country. So India, when you say it's a very diverse country and it's a beautiful country. Yeah, it it is. I yeah. wholeheartedly yeah. agree uh, with you. Mm-hmm. So as we think about the diversity in India, I want to applaud mm-hmm. you and uh, Pastor B for your initiative of planting 20 churches by 2020. And this past weekend, yeah. you celebrated your 20th congregation being planted. And congratulations yeah, on that. Right. I want to give our listeners just a mm-hmm. sense of the diversity among these 20 mm-hmm. Indian church congregations. Mm-hmm. Do they all speak the same yeah. language? No. People talk, talking in Tamil. We have people talking in Telugu. And mm-hmm. like some of the people, they were talking Canada, yeah. yeah, and I've been there, and I know that we're we are mm-hmm. talking a couple hundred kilometers apart from the furthest mm-hmm. to the other one, and they're then group, yeah. grouped together. They're predominantly in the state of mm-hmm. Tamil Nadu as well as Andhra Pradesh. Are these twenty congregations, and even inside of only twenty, you've got three different languages being mm-hmm. being used? Yeah. So would these yeah. 20 congregations be mm-hmm. made up of the very same types of people, or do you have diversity even among the people of these 20 congregations? We have diversity in people. Tamil Nadu, their kind of culture, their kind of uh, uh, talking with people will be different. When we go to Andhra Pradesh, it is completely different. How they talk and how they have their it's different. Yeah, yeah. So it's not the same. Yeah. Yeah, different. Let's just talk about language for a minute. How many different languages do you actually mm-hmm. know? I know actually like to talk in two da- two languages, mm-hmm. to read and talk in two languages. Yeah. Well, are you adding mm-hmm. English in? Yeah. Yeah, so English is one of your languages? English and uh, Tamil, I know to read and write, yeah. mm-hmm. and Hindi, like, I have learned to read and write, but still, uh, now I, I'm not practicing it, but if I practice it, it will be all right, because I studied in a school where Hindi was also a medium, so yeah. I know Hindi also, yeah. Yeah. There in South India, where you're located, how many languages could mm-hmm. you actually hear on a daily basis, different languages? So obviously, you're going to... Yeah. Pretty much every day you're going to hear Tamil, you're going to hear Hindi, you're going to hear English. Are there other languages that you're going to hear? We can hear Telugu, we can hear Malayalam, we can hear Kannada. These yeah. are the most prominent languages we can hear it daily. Right, right. And one yeah. of the one of the fun stories that I, I remember in our travels, one time we were bringing a team mm-hmm. from Andhra Pradesh yeah. into Chennai, as soon as we crossed yeah. into Tamil Nadu, the tour guide that only spoke Telugu mm-hmm. could no longer have any type of communication with the locals that only mm-hmm. spoke te- uh, Tamil. And so it yeah. was very frustrating to try to figure out where in the world the Chennai airport was. And he had a difficult yeah. time because all he knew was Telugu. And we had only traveled yeah. like 100 kilometers from one state to the other state. Yeah. And Americans, yeah. we can't even famine that. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we border South yeah. Carolina and we cannot even comprehend mm-hmm. that it's literally possible like in India to go from North Carolina to South Carolina and no longer be able to talk yeah. to anyone or understand what they're saying. <laughs> but yet there's yeah. 400 common languages used in India. As you mm-hmm. said, the government doesn't recognize yeah. all 400, but then there's over yeah. 1,500 different dialects. And we've actually witnessed yeah. where you can go from like Chennai City and go into a village mm-hmm. and you can't even communicate any longer because their dialect yeah. is so foreign to yeah. what, what you're used to using. Can you give us an example of that? Yeah, like yeah, even like when we came to a GHI meeting in Hyderabad, like when we stepped on to the Hyderabad airport, we, we found it very difficult to communicate with people. Mm. Even though we were in India, yeah. like when we went to the shops, like it was very difficult. Yeah. Like when we talked to them, <laughs> we talked to them something and they replied something. We found it very difficult. Right. 
story from the mission field. After taking nearly a thousand people over to India, uh, there have been very professionally speaking people, but there's also been uh, people that as one of them, I'm just gonna refer to as our good old Hick uh, voices. And so we took a group from Rutherford County, North Carolina, my, my home county where I grew up. And uh, it was just hilarious watching the translators try to translate uh, Jim, one of the men on the team. Good morning, everybody. I just want you to know you're beautiful and I love you and Jesus loves you. It would be so slow and so drawn out. I remember the translator literally turning and looking at Jim as if he was saying, what do you want me to do with that? And everybody would bust out laughing, including Jim. And we just had the best time with that. One of the women on the team, Roxanne, bless her heart. Now I can say that being from Rutherford County, she would get to sharing um, with people and here she would go with, my name is Roxanne, bless your heart. And they would just look at her and smile, but they did not understand one word of English that she spoke. Global Hope India empowers the church in India through multiple channels. One of the most influential methods has proven to be sending individuals on short-term trips to India. During your 10 days in India, you will make a difference, be the hands and feet of Jesus, and see the lives of Indian internationals transformed by the gospel. We have opportunities in children's ministry, women's ministry, job training, medical missions, and more experience a life-changing adventure. If you're looking to make an impact, India is the place and GHI is the opportunity. See our trips at globalhopeindia.org forward slash go. Know your numbers. Maybe you've seen the show Shark Tank and you've seen the business owners come in to pitch to the sharks and explain why they're the right person to execute the vision for their business. Well, we believe that you are the right person to execute the vision for your church, and you need to know your numbers. This particular episode, it's about diversity, and we're going to talk about the numbers of diversity. So there's several things that we want to talk about in knowing the numbers of diversity. The first one is, what is the diversity in your community. We're going to use Raleigh, North Carolina as an example, and one of the suburbs known as the town of Mooresville. The diversity in Raleigh is 54% white, 28% African American, 11% Hispanic, and 5% Asian, and 2% other. Just in one of our suburbs here, known as the town of Mooresville, that dramatically changes, and Mooresville is 41% white, 12% African American, 5% Hispanic, and 37% Asian, 5% other. And this is according to census.gov. And so it's important there to look at what is the diversity in your congregation. Consider a church of 100 people. In this in these numbers, a church of 100 people in Raleigh, North Carolina, if they're going to truly represent the face of diversity in their community, for every 100 people, 54 are going to be white, 29 are going to be black, 11 are going to be Hispanic, and 5 are going to be Asian. When you get to the town of Mooresville, the numbers dramatically change. Out of 100 people, 41 are going to be white, 12 are going to be black, 5 are going to be Hispanic, and 37 are going to be Asian. 5 will be other. And so know the numbers in your community, know the numbers in your congregation. But let's go a, a little bit deeper. What is the diversity in your leadership? If a church of 100 were to have 20 people in leadership, not necessarily all paid staff, these can be um, the, the deacons, the elders, whatever you call your leadership, 
but let's say that there's 20 in predominant leadership roles over Sunday school, over men's ministry, over missions, whatever, the diversity in your leadership should be influenced by the numbers of diversity in your community. Most likely in a church of 100 in North Carolina, let's say, uh, if there is 20 in leadership, 19 are probably white and one might be black, but very few are going to be Hispanic, very few are going to be Asian. And so it's something to measure and know the numbers about. But another thing that is very important to the international community is what is the diversity in your worship team and the people that you have on platform? A church of 100, maybe let's just say that they have 15 people on platform. It's not uncommon in North Carolina for all 15 to be white. And that's not necessarily representing the diversity in the community. The church's mission is to reach its community in order to change the world. We need to have a representation of the diversity in our community. We need to be truly reaching the community, not just the white percentage of our community and ignoring the, the, the African-Americans, the Hispanic, and the Asians, but that we are going for the true diversity of our community. With this diversity comes a mix of various religions. What are some of the common religions mm-hmm. that you're exposed to? We know that the majority of uh, in, people from mm-hmm. India identify themselves as Hindu, and then there's a large yeah. population of Muslims, and then Christians. Mm-hmm. Other religions? Yeah, we have uh, Sikhism, Buddhism, yep. J- Jainism. Yeah. Parsi, we have a religion, but I don't. But I haven't seen any one of them. But I have read that we have Parsi religion here, right. and we have uh, another religion also, Zoroastrianism. A variety of skin tones, mm-hmm. a variety of languages, a variety of religions. Um, yeah. Give me some examples yeah. of just how different the cultures can be from from one group to another group. Yeah, when you take a Hindu group, got the way they dress and they do their tradition there the ceremonial things, everything is different. Like for Hindu, like for a particular time, they have, they put some, like 40 days, they have a special time. Mm-hmm. The 40 days, they don't have any like non-witch kind of things. They don't talk to their wives mm-hmm. mostly. And they just keep them aloof and morning, like three o'clock or four o'clock, they get up and they just bath themselves in cold water. Mm-hmm. and go to the temple and the 40th day they'll just go to the temple and it will be a big ceremony they'll have all pujas and do all the kind of uh, things they'll get it in their head mm-hmm. and they uh, go to Kerala and they walk to walk to the Sabarimala temple mm-hmm. so yeah. this is one of the main thing happening in Hinduism like it's one of their great culture and uh, the way they dress the way they exhibit themselves for for each like each month we have a festival for mm-hmm. them. So for each festival they do different things very differently. Mm-hmm. And like we have the like uh, in Hindu culture itself we have different groups. Mm-hmm. Uh, one each group will do different things. Like we we cannot see the same thing in all the groups. Each group does different things in Hindu culture. And like Islam we have the same thing what others do. Mm-hmm. And uh, in Jainism, they're completely different. They mm-hmm. don't show their face at all. They mm-hmm. have their food styles. Everything is different. Uh, the way they dress is different, and mm-hmm. the way the way they talk to others is different. Yes. And like some of the holy men, they don't even uh, raise their head. I don't know if our listeners understand, but what you're describing is that in just the religion of 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 Hinduism, there's a lot of varieties mm-hmm. of diversity in their own groups. And you'll have one group that will never touch mm-hmm. anything non-veg and another group that will yeah. eat some non-veg. Talk just for a minute about the diversity that you witness between the Muslim community and the Hindu community. How are their cultures different, yeah. their festivals different? Hindu community is basically divided into two, one, like... It's a higher caste. They are called as Brahmins. Mm-hmm. And uh, they are always in the top level in Hinduism. The second group is a common group. Like the only, the Brahmins will be allowed only in the temple. So they will be only allowed to do all the pujas to, uh, to their gods. And the other people, they will not be allowed to do so. So these are the two traditions in Hindus. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, their thing and their culture, everything is different. The Brahmins, their culture is completely different. They don't, they don't even touch the other people. Mm-hmm. They don't get things from other people. Mm-hmm. And uh, the next kind of group, they are common. But these two people, they have hatred among themselves because the other group, they don't like the Brahmins, the first group. So mm-hmm. they are always higher. Their, their uh, priorities are always accepted by the government. So they, do, they don't have a good uh, relationship. So Muslims in India, like they have a wide kind of diversity mm-hmm. and they uh, distribute speech and uh, they go to mosque. But uh, the Muslims, they don't uh, have a, a wide uh, kind of contact with the others. They always be in their group. Mm-hmm. They don't like to come out of their group. Like uh, only with their group. Even in my class, I have two, three kids. Muslim kids, uh, like, they'll be comfortable with their own group. So this is what I found in Muslim. Here yeah. in the U.S., <clears throat> a lot of my mm-hmm. friends from India don't relate mm-hmm. to the raci- racial tension that we uh, mm-hmm. have in our history here in the U.S., the, the tension among blacks and whites. Mm-hmm. Why, why don't Indians relate to that? When there's so much diversity in India, why, mm-hmm. why is it hard to relate to the conflicts between blacks and whites in, in America? We have all been taught India as one nation, and we have been seeing like many people around us from the childhood age. Mm-hmm. So we never thought that others are different. We always think that everyone are the same, only their language is different because like, uh, they are uh, brothers and sisters. And we don't have any discrimination in that. Any mm-hmm. time we don't have that. Always we have in our mind that they are our brothers and sisters. Like from the young age, we have a pledge in our school that says all Indians are our brothers and sisters. We've brought up like that. We don't have a discrimination of that. And, and that's, yeah. that's important for the American church to understand that really our Indian mm-hmm. friends can help us be a part of the solution for diversity in our churches yeah. because they, they've grown mm-hmm. up with it. It's, it's not as difficult mm-hmm. for them as it might yeah. be for blacks and whites here, here in America. So yeah. only in the last 20 years has the U.S. really began mm-hmm. to be a melting pot for so many different international communities so up until 20 mm-hmm. years ago, there was a large increase in the population among Spanish-speaking immigrants. Mm-hmm. But in the last 20 mm-hmm. years, a lot of the yeah. immigrants have become Asian, have come from Asian countries. Mm-hmm. And so it's really be- okay. the U.S. has really began to become a melting, melting pot. Would you say that India is mm-hmm. a melting pot? Of no, a lot I don't of- think so. India is for others to come in yeah hasn't reached that stage. Yeah, India has a lot, lot of varieties. Of, we have many people coming from other states too. I have seen people from Korea. I have seen people from China. I have seen people from Singapore to come here and do work here. Right. I think India is also becoming a thing like that. So we've definitely seen the yeah. influx of international populations here in North Carolina, but we're actually on the lower scale of the numbers. Mm-hmm. Places like New York Mm -hmm. City and California, different places have seen a lot greater influx Mm -hmm. of internationals. But even like in New York Mm -hmm. City, for example, we have Chinatown, we have Little India. It's like these pockets Mm -hmm. of immigrants are are grouping together Mm -hmm. there. But and when Mm -hmm. I travel over in India, I don't see that. Do you do you see where one group begins and one group starts? I really see more of a more of of a, a melting. I've yeah. been under the l- most expensive yeah. house in the world in Mumbai, a billion dollar mm-hmm. house, mm-hmm. but right up under it are yeah. some of the poorest people on planet earth. And so you can't yeah. really see yeah. where the rich begins, where the poor begins. You can't see where the hi- Hindu begins and the Muslim begins. You can't see where the Tamil speaking yeah. people begin and the Telugu speaking people mm-hmm. begin. What What's yeah. your experience? Yeah, it's like, uh, even though like we have different sets of people, different races of people, and people with, like, we are all the same. Even we have diverse people from other countries coming and staying here. Mm-hmm. India has never lost its unity and diversity. We are all united. Yeah, even though we are diverse, like, we are all united. We, we stay united. There's a quote that really drives me as I try to help the mm-hmm. church in the U.S. reach internationals, and it's from yeah. 
Dr. Billy Graham, mm -hmm. this is the quote. She has one-sixth of the world's population. One out of every six people in the world is an Indian. Her masses are now restless. They're questing and searching for spiritual and economic answers to their age-old problems. As India goes, all Asia will go with her. There, where Dr. Yeah. Billy Graham says, if, if we can mm -hmm. get the gospel to India, then India can, yeah. can take the gospel to all of Asia. And maybe you already mm -hmm. know this, but there's statistics are showing at least 1.3 billion people in India. Mm -hmm. But when you add up all the populations of the Asian countries, it's 4.6 billion. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Billy Graham yeah. in 1972 said, if we can get the gospel to 1.3 mm -hmm. billion, they can take it to the 4.6 billion. What do you think sure, about that? Yeah. Why, why would he say that? Or? Yeah, that, that's true. I think one of the main reasons what you have said is like India is the place where like one of the uh, disciples of Jesus, he came here. Mm -hmm. And so he gave us like, so India is like a place where one of the disciples died here. So revolution can start from India. Mm -hmm. And like India is uh, the second largest population in the world. Mm -hmm. And Indians have a strong desire, passion, and they, and they do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. So I have seen many people like they rise up and do things for, for Jesus. Mm -hmm. So they have a strong passion. Like if, if it's just ignited in them, they'll just go and finish the work. Mm -hmm. So that's why uh, Dr. Billy Graham said that if India is being saved, the whole world would have will be safe. I love you and yeah. Pastor B and your family, and I'm so glad that you're partners mm -hmm. with Global Hope India. So yeah. on the phone with us today is Lady V. She is the wife of Pastor B in Chennai, India. Yeah. And one of our yeah. dear partners of Global Hope India for many years. And we're very blessed yeah. to have you on the phone with us today. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Global Hope India. Yeah. Okay. God bless yeah. you. Tell Pastor yeah. B I said hello. Thank you. And we love y'all. We'll talk to you yeah. soon. We want to hear from you. We've set up a dedicated phone line to record your three-minute story at 817-66-DREAM. That's 817-66-DREAM. Do you have a story of a foreign-born international that found Christ as a result of coming to the USA, who is now making Christ known? We want to know. Call 817-66-DREAM and leave your message. If we pick your message, we will send you and them a free Living the Dream t-shirt. Check it out on our website. Again, that's 817-66-DREAM. Thank you for listening to the Living the Dream podcast, empowering and equipping church staff with an identifiable and measurable strategy for reaching internationals and changing the world. You can help us live the dream by liking, commenting, subscribing to this podcast wherever you listen to your podcasts. And you can find more resources to empower and equip your church staff at globalhopeindia.org resources. That's globalhopeindia.org resources.